All right, before you watch any of the rest of this video, the first thing you need to know is that if you are installing this fan in an existing bathroom, instead of cutting out the drywall to the exact dimensions of the top of the unit and planning to leave this lip here on the edges and screwing up in through your drywall to the joist, don't do that. It does not work. Uh, instead, you're going to need to cut out this a hole in your ceiling the size of the bottom of the unit, the whole lip, and install it directly, drill it directly into the joists and the header. Uh, you'll see why a little bit later in the video. I'm going to attempt to shoot a really unscientific installation video of the Panasonic FV20V Q3. Hadn't seen many of these on YouTube, so uh, we'll see how this thing turns out. I would consider myself to have an average skill set on these type of projects, but I've recently become obsessed with bathroom fans and uh, trying to clear humidity out of our bathroom. So anyway, the first thing I did, I disconnected this piece that is the uh, kind of duct and electrical box. It's two screws. Um, it's pretty simple to do. Uh, next thing I did is I cut a template out of a piece of cardboard that was actually in the box. This is uh, around, I think, 12 and 3 16th. Hold that up, cut it into my ceiling. Uh, you can see here that I am right up against one of the joists. So uh, that marked, that and the existing square from the existing fan marked the hole uh, where I was able to cut it. And I just held it up there, uh, just the fan body and uh, it fits. So, on to the next step. So you have to build a header to support the weight of the fan. I've already been in my attic and measured and found that my ceiling joists are about 22 and a half inches apart. So I'm going to cut some lumber uh, at 22 and a half inches, and then I've got to cut a span that goes between uh, kind of those header pieces uh, that kind of goes between them and supports them, keeps them in place. It needs to be 17 and 7 eighths inches long. So I'm going to do a great job getting that exact length uh, with my circular saw, but hopefully it'll be close enough. Okay, so I've cut my lumber without cutting off an arm or a leg. That's always a victory for me. I've got a piece here that's 17 and 7 eighths inches, two pieces that are 22 and a half inches that will span the area between my ceiling joists. I wanted to point this out. I think this will be confusing. You can see here, this B measurement is obvious. Uh, it mentions it here, 17 and 7 eighths. Uh, that's the area uh, kind of that the, the spans of the header should be spaced out. But it doesn't actually have A labeled, as far as I can tell, in this diagram. So this 12 and 13, 30 seconds, I've labeled it here. I believe that is uh, that will tell me where I need to put this 7 and 7 eighths piece. So I think this 12 and 13 30 seconds is the measurement for this piece between the joist and that shorter piece. Uh, so I've labeled it here for myself, so I won't forget. Just wanted to mention that. So after much toil and near misses and awkward stretches, I got the header built. I think I mentioned that my ceiling joists are like 22 and a half inches apart. So that's what these are. And according to the installation manual's specs, this was to be 17 and 7 eighths inches long. And so, got all these screwed in. Feels nice and sturdy. Uh, I'm not exactly a carpenter, but I think it'll be good enough. And, uh, yeah, it's fairly square. Uh, the measurements seem to work, so I think the next step is actually... Uh, screwing the body of the fan uh, up in through the bathroom ceiling and it will screw on this side, this side, and that side over there. Uh, and we'll pick it up from there in a moment. One more thing I'll mention quickly. If your attic is anything like mine, you do not have a lot of room to work with. And you also have up here, I don't know if you can see them, but these nails sticking through the roof. Uh, so there are a couple of things that I always wear when I come up to work in my attic. Let's see if I can take it off here. 
Uh, if you don't have this already, uh, you'll want it. Get a hard hat and a headlamp. You'll look ridiculous. Your family will make fun of you. Uh, but it helps so much to, A, uh, keep from getting a nail into your head and having to go get a tetanus shot. And the headlamp also keeps your hands free to do uh, work up here. So here's where I'm going to call an audible. Panasonic sends these, they call them long screws in the instruction manual. And here's what they mean by long screw. I'm not really that confident in the ability of this screw to really effectively grab, if you can see that there, to grab the ceiling joist. Fan's fairly heavy, so I'm not gonna use their screws. I managed to uh, dig up six. Uh, they're a little bit more substantial. So I'm gonna use those instead. So uh, anyway, if you are gonna be dr drilling through drywall of your ceiling, if you're doing kind of a uh, remodel, you might want to provide your own screws instead of using the stubby ones that they sent. You never know when you might want to do pull-ups from your bathroom fan, uh, so you want to brace it accordingly. So now it's up. I've got all the screws in. One of the things that I'm seeing that concerns me a little, I'll go close up here. This is the opening for the uh, electrical connection. Uh, there's a box that sits on the other side of that. And you can see that I've got some drywall here. It looks like it's going to make connecting that box to the body of the fan impossible. So I may have to do some, uh, some work on that, maybe cut the drywall away, uh, but we'll see. Okay, so here we are in my attic with the fan screwed in. Again, this is screwed in through the ceiling drywall, which I'm realizing now is going to be a problem. If you look over here, uh, I mean, at first glance, you'd think, oh, that's going to work. But this piece, you can see there's not enough clearance at the bottom for it. Get one hook on. So, I'm going to need to cut away more drywall through the ceiling. Hopefully it will fit tightly. And you can see here there's a, this electrical box is pretty wide. Uh, so, it's not like I could just cut away enough uh, drywall to kind of work around that. Uh, so, <laughs> we'll see how this turns out. So, what feels like a giant step backward, I have unmounted the fan, traced around the kind of the metal installation lip. I'm going to cut around that, you see the lines there, so that I can mount it directly to the header and the ceiling joist. Hopefully that will give me enough clearance at the top that the whole thing will fit together nicely. It looks like the, uh, the I guess the vent cover, the grill, is just big enough to cover that area that I've outlined there. So uh, hopefully I won't end up having to do some uh, ceiling repair uh, so as to hide that once it's all done. All right, I finally succeeded in cutting enough or just enough of the ceiling away so that I can mount the fan directly to the header into the ceiling joist. Like this should give me the clearance I need here. Uh, hopefully you can see this in the video. Uh, so just enough clearance that I think I've got free space here for the electrical box to mount into the fan body the way that it needs to. And then I believe the duct itself will kind of mount on the other side of this. Uh, my wife actually came in and said it would have been easier if we just moved. Hopefully you'll have uh, a bit more luck than me. So I'm back in my second home, the attic, and this is after cutting away the drywall on my ceiling so that I could mount the fan from the underside or from the uh, interior house side directly to the header and to the ceiling joist and that did make a world of difference. Uh, I'm going to be fine here as far as my uh, clearance on getting this piece uh, hooked on and screwed in uh, on the interior side once I get it wired up. However, another problem, uh, this header, I use a 2x4 is in the way of this piece. 
and it's compounded by the fact that I'm going to be taking mine down. I've got a six to four adapter. I've got four inch duct work. I know, I know I'm losing some of the fan's performance if I do that, but right now I just can't go through the hassle of replacing my four inch duct work with a six inch. So I'm going to see how this works. If I need to, I'll come back and do that later. Uh, but you can see this sticks out even farther. Uh, so I'm going to, in hindsight, I should have used probably a two by two. This would have been a great thing to put in the directions, Panasonic. So I'm going to have to cut away part of this 2x4 in order to make room for this. So uh, that's the next part of this adventure. So after much careful cutting, I finally hollowed out that 2x4. Uh, there's still about 2 inches left, uh, and I'm not terribly worried about its integrity. It's not holding a ton of weight, so I think it'll be fine. Uh, but I've put a divot in here. I ended up using a reciprocating saw with the, uh, I want to say there's a blade, I think it's called the ugly stick. I'll try to put a link to it in the uh, video description here. But after doing that, uh, you can see that uh, clearance wise, it looks like I'm going to be fine, even with uh, this adapter I'm putting on it, so that'll be perfect. The adapter's still a little bit loose. I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to crimp it just a little bit with an HVAC crimper. Again, I'll try to put a tool or a link to that tool in the video description. Uh, just to make it fit a little bit more snug with uh, this duct adapter. So having used my crimping tool, uh, you can tell this adapter fits a lot more snugly. Uh, basically, you might be able to see here, the crimping tool just puts... Uh, it just reduces the slack, it makes it fit a little bit more tightly. Uh, I saw online that uh, you're supposed to, I think it was the Sheet Metal Kids YouTube channel that he recommended using. Uh, so this is one of these tools, again I'll put a link in the description. And uh, you put the side with the multiple teeth on the inside, and the lesser teeth, in this case one, on the outside. And then you just go around and squeeze. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to tape this up with uh, aluminum uh, tape here, metallic tape, and uh, get that nice and snug, and uh, then we'll proceed after that. So I have my adapter taped with metallic tape uh, to the part of the fan that will go to the housing. I overdid it because I always do that. Uh, you could, yeah, you could hang on this thing. I don't think these two would come apart, but uh, anyway, you probably don't need to do as much as I did. However... I don't want to come back up and do it later if they pop loose. All right, so now it's just a matter of wiring these things up. Uh, I think these two green will go into the bare copper wire here. Uh, the black will go to the black wire. White to the white. And we'll uh, do it with wire nuts. Oh, by the way, this little plastic thing, I ripped it out of my old, um, my old fan. This is to keep, I guess, the cord from fraying on the uh, sharp metal edge. Uh, you'll have to provide your own. I'll try to link to one of these, maybe on Amazon. But it doesn't come in the box, which is stupid. Uh, but you're going to need this piece. Uh, and you probably have some wire nuts from your old fan if you're replacing it. Uh, you can use those. So I've got it wired up here. Now there's, I think there are two screws that run from the inside. You have to screw these in from the interior of the house. And they connect... See how this is a little bit loose? They connect this to the actual body of the fan housing. Uh, my concern is that this is going to be, it's far enough away from the fan itself that I'm going to have a hard time getting those screws through. So I'm going to, I ran a little twist tie through there, or not a twist tie, a, um, just a plastic clip of some sort, cable tie. And I'm going to tape it, I think I've got it lined up, I'm going to tape it in place and run downstairs and see if I can put the screw through. We'll see if that works. All right, so in what I can only describe as maybe God just having mercy on me, these screws did go in. There's one there and one there. And those go through from the inside, connect the main body of the fan unit to the duct adapter. Uh, so now I'm just going to plug this guy in here and uh, finish connecting the duct. Put the grill on it, and I, 
I think we might actually be done with this project. I'm not sure if my kids remember who I am or my name, but uh, hopefully they're still down there somewhere in the house. Connected the duct. In hindsight, I should have connected this before I connected here. I ended up not having much clearance to work with here, uh, but it is airtight. So my work up here uh, should be done. I may try to, well, I'm gonna actually tape this to make sure this is nice and airtight. Uh, I'll have them turn it on below and feel for where any air may be seeping through and then hit that with a metallic tape. All right, for the record, here's how this unit sounds from the attic with the uh, duct connected. This depends on what your definition of quiet is. Uh, fairly quiet. Some say that they can't hear that it's running. I have not found that to be the case. So here's a look at the finished insulation. I use this uh, fabric kind of duct hanker deal. It was here just to uh, get off the ground a little bit. Seemed like the right thing to do. I just have to fluff up some of this duct work and um, otherwise make the insulation, or not fluff up the duct work, fluff up the insulation and uh, make that a little bit better. But I may do that tomorrow. I have to go downstairs and buy my nine year old daughter a pony and my seven year old son a car for being gone so much the last few days doing this. All right, here it is running in not exactly whisper quiet. Part of that could be the duct work that I have. If it moves the humidity out, I'm not as concerned about the noise. And here it is with the grill on. I will uh, let you hear how it sounds when I turn it on just so you can hear the noise. So this is off. That's on. Again, you can definitely hear it. I still need to caulk some up there some of the rough areas where there's still gaps uh, between the body of the fan and the headers. But for the most part, this installation is done. I don't even want to guess how many hours it took, but uh, you know, like I said, mercifully, the grill covered uh, the wider area that I had to cut into the ceiling drywall. Hope this has been helpful. Hope you avoided some of the mistakes that I made.